Hello everyone, it's Lee Russell here with some exciting news about the progress of the writing of my latest book, Evil Eye, a Lissa Blackwood thriller. And the news is that the first draft of that book is finished. It's been an absolute pleasure to write. I have enjoyed the process from start to finish and I have been really excited to follow the adventures of my new character, Lissa Blackwood, from the start of the book in France through to some things happening internationally, bad things in Madrid and in Athens towards quite a dark and quite a noir ending for the story in an old nuclear bunker off the North Russian coast in an area called Sevenaya Zemlya. So quite a lot of travel going on, quite a lot of exciting international things happening. What's the basic foundation for the story? What's this world setting? The book is set just after the UK has left the European Union. As I'm speaking now, it's September 18 and the UK is due to leave with whatever transitional arrangements might apply in March 19. So right, right now today, there are no deals on the table. Nobody knows what the world is going to look like early next year when the UK has left the European Union. And in my plotting for Evil Eye, one of the things which I considered and then the, the, the setting which I have decided to run with is that the European Union post-Brexit has decided to punish the UK for leaving and for causing this economic, political, social disruption to that great European experiment, which is the European Union. So the EU member states decide to punish the UK economically and politically and as a result there's unemployment um, and a great deal of social unrest in the UK and at this point a far-right ultra-nationalist government is elected. One of the things that the far-right government in the UK then decides to do is to push away some of the physical barriers that France has put in place to um, enabling the UK to export goods onto continental Europe and the far-right UK government decides to do that by occupying actually part of the Pas de Calais area in the book this is called the British Administration Zone. This is not intended to be about territory conquering, it's not about war although this action could actually take um, Europe back into a hot war if it continues but the action was not intended to be that. It was about that UK stock could not flow exports out of the UK through um, these parts of France onto the rest of continental Europe because France was getting in the way and preventing those things from happening. So the UK's forced it. The UK's forced those roads to open so that the UK exports can travel onwards to Germany and the Netherlands, Belgium, Spain and so on. It's just push those roads open. So at the start of the book, Lissa Blackwood is um, now conducting a covert mission in northern France in the British administration zone. This is where it begins. And she then slowly gets sucked into a world of larger scale international espionage. Because what SIG come to learn is that Brexit is not just the result of the decisions of national governments. It's not just the result of tensions between nation states. Something else is happening. And they turn over, SIG, slowly the name of an international player who is causing a lot of the tension in the world. And this name is Malocchio, the evil eye. So Malocchio is the character who's the titular name for this book. And slowly, Lissa Blackwood and SIG start to unravel some of the things that Malocchio and his team, which he's calling the players, some of the things that they're up to. And that takes us on a journey towards a major terrorism attack in Madrid. And then some other events in Athens, not terrorism, something different. Towards a discovery that Malocchio's players are planning a major terrorist attack throughout Northern Europe 
And this of Blackwood has an opportunity covertly to disrupt that if she would allow herself to be abducted unknowing, by, by the players unknowingly, to allow herself to be abducted into their preparations for the attack, which is how, in fact, Lissa Blackwood ends up in Seven Eyes Emilia. So it's a very broad story that's happening, but it's, very, it's a very human story, and it is, in fact, very focused on uh, Lissa Blackwood's desires to do the right thing, and the sense of courage and bravery that she has and her tenacity and her drive to get those things done. I never thought, in fact, that I was going to be a conspiracy thriller writer. And it's been very interesting to learn how to write in that genre because every literary genre has its own expectations, has its own rules. And I always actually thought I was destined to be a sci-fi writer. Sci-fi is my first love. I've been reading it since I was a teenager. And I've enjoyed all aspects of that very broad world of writing, be it from early writing in the 30s and the 40s, or if it's pulp, golden age, 50s, 60s, all the way through to modern writings, um, cyberpunk dystopias. And many of the names... Of course, in this world of sci-fi today, if you read science fiction, they're household names. And I've loved them all. Arthur C. Clarke, Robert Heinlein, Robert Silverberg, who I have a great love and respect for, um, actually. Kim Stanley Robinson, you know, properly respected and recognised for his skill at world building and creating very realistic, very detailed future tellings. There's other names out there who tell fantastic stories but never quite got that same um, public uh, prominence like the, the, the people I was just suggesting. So other great writers like um, A.E. Van Vogt, um, great writer for example, but perhaps uh, under-recognised. Um, Piers Anthony perhaps would be another. So I always thought I was going to be a sci-fi writer but it's such a busy space that I don't think it's possible for many new authors to make any inroads now into the world of sci-fi and I want my stories to be enjoyed. So I made the decision to stop writing sci-fi to go somewhere else and in my researching what I discovered was actually I also really love the thriller world. I love conspiracy thrillers and as much as I've been reading and watching sci-fi since I was a teenager I've been doing the same actually for thrillers. Now, as a Brit, you know, the classic, cliched Brit sense of espionage is Ian Fleming. It's James Bond. It's the super survivable, super sexy Brit spy getting out there and doing things. Um, absolute classic stories, which are only one way of telling thrillers. Because the counterbalance to Fleming's tales, of course, is John le Carré. And my great love for, from le Carré is his Cold War story, The Spy Who Came In From The Cold, and his character Lemus, so real, so human, so suffering, and yet still striving. There's elements of Lemus in Lissa Blackwood, I think, probably. Um, other great uh, writers that I enjoyed as part of my preparation for writing a conspiracy thriller would include names like Clive Cussler, um, David Young, his story Stasi Child, absolutely brilliant, a brilliant telling of, of, of East Germany. Um, L.A. Larkin wrote uh, a couple of great books, Devour and Thirst, set in very cold places. And I've an, I've an affinity, uh, I think, uh, emotionally and physically with cold places. And those stories really resonated with me. Now, whether you want to call them action stories or thrillers, put them in whatever bucket you like, but for me, they're great stories, and for me, they were thrillers. Other names, uh, J.B. Turner, his story Gone Bad, uh, great story. Um, also, David Baldacci, I love reading Dalbacci, uh, The Innocent, that was a great story. And all of these things went into the blender to help me understand and help me shape how I was going to share this great post-Brexit story about Lissa Blackwood in the world of conspiracy thriller. Uh, I've loved it. I've loved the writing. 
So what I'm hoping with Evil Eye, Alyssa Blackwood thriller, is that I can now find an agent to help me sell this book to a traditional publisher. Up until now, I've been selling my own books through self-publishing, but I don't want to do that with this book if I can avoid it, because I think there's a lot of value in the story. I think there's a lot of potential through the three books, and I'm hoping that an agent and a traditional publisher can help unlock that value, which uh, I would probably struggle to do myself if I have to self-publish it. So that's the, that's the short-term goals laid out. Polish Evil Eye, finish book two, find an agent, hopefully sell the series. That's no small challenge, but I'm up for it. So we'll see what happens. Thanks. Bye-bye.